The seven star Infernape Terror Raid event has just been announced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In today's video, we'll cover all of the event details, what makes Infernape such a big threat to go up against, and some of the best builds to help you prepare for this raid so you have an easier time taking it down when this Mightiest Mark Pokemon goes live. Players will be able to challenge 7 Star Infernape for the first time when the raid goes live from the 4th to the 6th of October and this event will return the following week for its final appearance from the 11th until the 13th. Before we get into some of the best Pokemon builds to take Infernape down, let's first take a look at what we can potentially expect to see from this 7 Star Infernape on the battlefield. Infernape has a base fighting and fire typing so expect to see a mixture of these types of attack during the event. It has an even 104 attack and special attack stat so it feels very likely we'll also see a mixed set of physical and special attacking options. Like previous 7 star raid Pokemon, Infernip is likely going to have its hidden ability which is Iron Fist. So if you weren't aware this ability boosts damage of all punching type attacks by 20%. The punching type attacks that Infernape gets access to which are all boosted by the Iron Fist ability are Drain Punch, Fire Punch, Focus Punch, Mac Punch and Thunder Punch. And with its Rock Terror typing, Infernape will be hit for super effective damage from Water, Grass, Ground, Steel and Fighting type attacks. The most optimal attacking options for this raid will likely be Ground, Fighting, Water due to the Fire and Fighting coverage Infernape has which make bringing Grass and Steel types almost impossible. Water types also need to be careful due to the electric coverage Infernip has access to and even fighting types need to be a little cautious due to the possibility of Infernip having flying type coverage in acrobatics. The physical attacking options Infernip is likely to carry in this raid are close combat or even drain punch as drain punch gets that iron fist boost taking it from 75 to 90 base power. Flare Blitz or Fire Punch are its most likely physical type attacking options. Stone Edge could be its rock type attack to complement its terror typing and follows a similar pattern to previous 7 star terror raids with a big powerful attacking option with less accurate attributes. Thunder Punch gives Infernape that electric coverage we talked about which is great against water type Pokemon that you might bring to this base fire type Pokemon. And we've already mentioned it but with that Iron Fist hidden ability there's a good chance of it being utilized in this event. Acrobatics also gives Infernape flying type coverage that would pose an issue for some fighting types uh, that would otherwise be quite optimal for this event. Now not only with those physical type options, Infernip's special attacking options are worth mentioning. These are Focus Punch, it's fighting type special type attack which gets the Iron Fist boost as well and pushes it all the way up to a base 180 attack. Focus Punch is a bit of a double edged sword though because it does only have 70% accuracy but if this does land it's going to be doing a lot of damage if not resisted. Overheat is likely the most powerful special type attack we're going to see, although it does get a lot of variety with things like Flamethrower, Heat Wave and Fire Blast that could also make an appearance. And to help cover water and ground types, we could also see Infernip having access to options like Solar Beam or even Grass Knot. Now Infernip does get a good pool of setup options. Bulk Up and Sword Stance could be options we see here to boost its attacking stats. Nasty Plot gives the Infernape a nice option to boost its special attack and stat and Sunny Day is a field effect and something that would power up fire type attacks. Take away the Solar Beam charge turn if it's got it and decrease the water type threats that could come out in this raid. I've also listed fake tiers as this could be a move we could see to lower our special defense and increase the damage from attacks like Overheat, Focus Punch and Solar Beam especially if Nasty Plot is not utilized alongside something opposed to Bulk Up instead. I definitely think this raid could be a tricky one, with Infernape's good setup options, high attacking stats and solid coverage options as well as the raid interactions on top of this, it may be a tougher one than a lot of players are expecting. But since we have a good idea of the things we're likely to see in this raid, let's hop over and take a look at some builds I've put together, which I think could be quite successful in taking this Mightiest Mog Pokemon down. As always, all of the builds that we feature in today's video will be down in the description if you want to take a look at them after the video. The first build that we're going to look at is going to be Swampert. I do feel like it could be a good option going into this raid. Water and ground typing is its base typing. We've got the ground terror typing on there. And the only thing we're going to have to be very cautious of going into this raid, if we do see the Infernape have access to Grass Knot or Solar Beam, keep that in mind. If we see those two options, 
I think we have to discount the Swampert as being something that we can utilize. But the likelihood of it having Thunder Punch is going to make Swampert a very good option into this raid. It's going to have resistances to those fire type attacks. We're going to have a way to weaken those. It's not going to be affected by the Thunder Punches and taking neutral damage from most other options uh, that the Infernip has. Not to mention we have the resistance to any rock type attacks that would be boosted by that terrestrialization. Shell Bell here is going to be the held item for a line of recovery through the raid. And of course, it goes without saying, if you watch these videos before, we do hyper train all of the IVs and level everything up to 100. The moveset for the Swampert is going to be Rain Dance, Bulk Up, Chilling Water and Earthquake. The ability here is going to be Torrent. The Damp ability doesn't play much effect here, so Torrent's just fine. And then the EV spread is going to be 252 EVs in HP and attack with an Adamant Nature. With the remaining EVs, those six in defense or special defense, whichever you would prefer, depending on what the raid looks like. Now, the basic idea of this moveset is going to be turn one, set up the rain dance. We're going to weaken those fire type attacks that could come out from the Infernip. Also, if it has got something like Sunny Day, we disrupt that as well. Then we're going to use a combination of bulk up to boost our attack and our defense so we take attacks better. Also meaning that our attacks are going to be doing more essentially to the Infernip. And then we've got Chilling Water as well which kind of pairs up nicely giving us a way to damage the Infernip on the special side of the spectrum but also lowering that attack stat every time we do use it even if the shield's up powering down the Inferno, making it easier for us to function. Like I say, if we don't see the Solar Beam or Grass Knot, I do feel like Swampert could be a very solid, consistent option going into this raid. Next up is going to be one you already have probably built in your games. You may need to just slightly tweak it, but Iron Hands has worked time and time again in seven star raids, and I think it's going to have a good time against the Inferno in this one as well. Fighting, terror typing on it. We've got the held item of the skull plans, level 100, and of course, hyper trained. Moveset is going to be very similar to one we used recently. It is going to be iron defense, belly drum, focus energy, and drain punch. Fork drive the ability there, and the EV spread again, just to kind of cover against physical and special attacks from the Infernip. We've went to max out that HP stat, max out our attack, give it an adamant nature, and then the remaining EVs into that special defense stat. So the basic premise of this moveset is going to be turn one, go for focus energy, and probably chase down our terrestrialization as soon as possible, waiting for the Inferno to reset our stats on our side of the field. Once that happens, we're going to be in a position where we can get nine defense off, bolster to those defenses, take attacks a lot better. And then when we're in a comfortable position, go for that belly drum and then spam the drain punch after we've terrestrialized. In theory, it works out. In theory, it should work quite well. Even if the Infernip does have acrobatics, before we terrestrialize, we will you just hit neutral because of that part electric typing that we have. Because a lot of you already have Iron Hands in your games, probably already built for raids. This one might be one to look at initially when we go into it when the raid goes live. Next up is Garchomp. I think against the Infernip has a very good time. It is going to take neutral damage from those fighting type attacks. So that is something that we would have to kind of worry about. But we do have ways to mitigate it. We're going to have the resistance to the fire type attacks, to those rock type attacks as well. So I think all in all, the Garchomp could be quite a good option going into this. Shell Bell is the held item. Terror typing is going to be ground. The moveset is going to be very simple, straightforward. Breaking Swipe, Sword Stance, and then Earthquake. The ability is going to be the hidden ability here. It's going to be quite useful for that additional chip damage if the Infernip makes contact with us. And an EV spread of 252 EVs in HP and in attack with the remainder put into special defense with an adamant nature. Again, we're probably just going to start the raid by chasing down our terrestrialization by utilizing the breaking swipe. Every time we use this move, it's going to lower the attack on the Infernape by one stage, even if the shield goes up at the start of the raid, which is going to be good. Then we can terrestrialize very early on. After it's reset our stats, we're going to be able to use the sword stance three times, get a attack to plus six, and then just spam the earthquake, which is going to do super effective damage to the Infernape. And the fourth and final suggestion that we're going to have today is going to be Annihilate. Now, the only caveat with Annihilate bringing it to this raid, we've talked about it when we're in the overview of Infernip, is the acrobatics. It does have flying coverage. It could make this a little bit trickier. But if we do see things like fake tears, that's going to be great because we have that defiant ability. It's actually going to give us an attack boost, make things a little bit more streamlined in this raid. 
fighting, terror typing, of course. Held item for this one is going to be Skull Plans. It's going to follow a similar build to the Iron Hands in a lot of ways. Moveset is going to be Focus Energy, Screech, Bulk Up, and Drain Punch. The ability here is going to be Defined, and again, the EV spread just to give us a better coverage against them. A mixed attacker is going to be 252 in HP and in attack with an Adam in nature and the remainder put into special defense. The basic idea is going to be very similar to the Iron Hands. We are going to go for the focus energy turn one, then maybe chase down a terrestrialization, spam those drain punches until we can terrestrialize. Then when it has reset those stats on our side of the field, that's when we can go for those bulk ups. If the shield's not up at that point, we could probably go for screeches as well. Just we've got to keep an eye on when it resets its own stat drops to make sure that we're not doing that and wasting turns. So we've got to time that right. But I think uh, Annihilate with the focus energy, with those bulk ups, with the screech as well, could be quite useful in this raid. And Annihilate has the immunity to any fighting type attacks. It's going to be hit neutral, of course, from those fire type attacks. So that could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, the rock type, we're going to have the resistance from that. So all in all, on paper, very good, but we'll have to look at the raid interactions when it goes live to see how effective this can be. But they're the four builds I think are probably the safe ones going in this weekend. We'll not know until the raid goes live, of course. But as always, once we know the Infinips moves, determining the best solo build will be a lot easier. And if you want help with this, make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video, which we'll put out shortly after the event goes live. If you found today's video useful, do consider dropping a like. And also let me know down in the comments below what you think will work best going into the seven star Infinip. What Pokemon are you looking at to take into this raid? I'd love to read through your opinions below. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.